Hey there, Ben Shatterer here with StreamingMedia.com and today we're taking a look at editing video in the cloud with Wii Video. So let's jump right in. I'm going to log in with my Google account and once I'm logged in, the first place we'll come to is your projects and media library. Here you can view all your projects, media files, and project members. You can also access your account from this page. On the account tab is where you'll find all your account billing and sharing information. So I'm going to go back to the main page and select start here just to show you how the files would show up. Now if you want to start a new project just click the new project button and give your project a name. I'm going to call this one Kickstarter. So now that I've created a new project I can go ahead and start adding some videos. Now this should look pretty familiar to anyone who has used a nonlinear editing system. There is the media library on the left, timeline on the bottom, and viewer on the right. Let's import some videos. Now take a look at this. Here are all the files I've selected, but notice this one says it won't upload because the file size is too big. A file size exceeding 500 megabytes won't be uploaded. Considering how much video is shot in HD, file sizes exceeding 500 megabytes is pretty common. So the fact that Wii Video doesn't let you upload files greater than 500 megabytes is a bit annoying. Now this brings us to the main issue with editing in the cloud as opposed to editing off uh, your hard drive. I've got 15 videos here which means I have to wait for all 15 videos to upload. I'm gonna speed things up here though but this is a huge factor to consider. All your content has to be uploaded and depending upon your internet connection and I'm using Verizon Fios so it's pretty fast uh, it's gonna take a while. Now the flip side being that once your content is uploaded you can then edit from any device, from anywhere with an internet connection, with multiple people. Once your files have finished uploading, you can come over to the Private Files tab where you'll find all your uploaded media, and if I click on one, it will play in the viewer here. Adding clips to the timeline is a simple drag and drop feature. Okay, so that's how you upload your content. Now let's jump back to the main page for a second. Under the Media Files tab, you can see the 15 video clips plus some other videos I uploaded earlier. The nice thing here is that you can pick any file, and on the right hand side, you can play the clip as well as note the file size, type, and when you created the file. Notice how the file size here has drastically dropped from uh, say around 100 megabytes to just 3.2 megabytes. Coming back to the projects page, I'm going to select the preloaded tutorial in order to show you how editing works. In the clips bin, I can view thumbnails of all the different files I uploaded. And if you click on one, you'll see it pops up in the viewer on the right, and I can play it. With audio clips, you'll see a waveform of that audio track, which you can also play before adding to the timeline. Under the video tab, you'll find some slugs, different colors, and under the audio, there's a ton to choose from. You've got a good number of music bites here. You click to preview as well as sound effects and some atmosphere tones. In transitions, you've got your standard cross dissolve or crossfade as it's called here, as well as some wipes, 
3D transitions, and a couple others. You can preview the transition before applying. Now, as far as graphics go, WeVideo offers a bunch of different options, but they all seem to be a bit amateur. Standard text, thought bubbles, scrolling credits, and lower thirds, they're all here, but they all feel very iMovie-ish. Frames, I can't imagine professional use for, unless maybe you're editing some special event and the client forces it. The animations are neat, but very limited. They could be fitting in a few situations, but I can't think of many outside of a children's animation or cartoon. Keep in mind, WeVideo is, and foremost, a video editor, not a graphics or text application. So, if you want to add some effects to a particular clip, there is an FX button right above the timeline. Once you've added an effect, the FX logo will appear on the clip in the timeline. There's a bunch here, but there is no control over the amount the effect yields. It's either on or off. The color correction is fairly basic and limited, as you can see. Don't expect to find any histograms or three-way color corrections. Just the bare basics. You can adjust audio levels in a similar fashion to Final Cut by creating points and dragging, but there is no decibel level to base your adjustments off of. The peak monitor over to the left only shows colors. You can see it's in the green, which is good, but I have no idea how loud that is. I want you guys to note the playback quality and remember what it looks like after I export. When editing in Wii Video, you're working off of a low quality proxy. So don't get worried if your HD material looks pixelated around the edges. Changing text is pretty fast, but also fairly limited. With the text selected, I'll click on the FX button and you'll see my options. Colors, fonts, and size are here and change in the viewer as you click through. And down at the bottom, you can make some more text alignment adjustments. Now, one of the more powerful and surprising functions in Wii Video is the clip overlay. You can add a track, drop a video clip, and then resize, rotate, flip horizontally and vertically, as well as bring forward or send backward. You can also create a video wall with this function. Okay, so now if you're ready to export, you get this dialog box that tells you how many export minutes you have left, as well as the option to export in 1080p. Paying an additional $8 for something that I'm already paying for seems a bit ludicrous to me. And when you export, you have the option of exporting to YouTube, Vimeo, Facebook, Twitter, as well as through FTP or your Wii Video account. Just to show you the final exporting version, I'm going to come under the Project Exports tab here and select Download. Save it to wherever you want and then I'll play it back to show you the quality here. Overall, Wii Video is an impressive online video editor. It does not, however, come close to being a full-featured professional video editor. It can get the job done for a lot, it just depends on what your use is. The collaborative ability is nice if you need to edit with different people that are physically separated. There's certainly a lot of potential here, and a lot of additions have been made since Wii Video first came to consumers. So we'll have to wait and see how Wii Video grows. The bottom line is, Wii Video may work for some, 
but for most video editors, a more in-depth editor will be required. 